This week, we're at the Ironman World Championship in mythical Kona, Hawaii. Meet Europe's top athletes two days before the season showdown on the Lava Island. And show you all the highlights of the men's and women's World Championship race. Famed for its beautiful coastline, warm climate, and diverse landscape, the volcanic island of Kona once a year provides the picturesque setting for the hardest one-day endurance challenge in the world, the Ironman World Championship. Hawaii is the birthplace of Ironman, and the World Championship is the holy grail of the sport, the race every professional triathlete lives for. Uh, this race in Hawaii is really special because it all started here and um, when you tell somebody triathlon the first thing that comes up is Hawaii so uh, it's the world championship, it's the most important race of the year. This is the race you've worked for the whole year, not just one year, but for some people it's a lifetime achievement because it's not just the pros but also the age groupers. Every triathlete I know who's won here uh, goes down in history as a legend. It's always one of the biggest and most special events on every calendar and everybody wants to see the person here who wins. The atmosphere is fantastic. There are so many positively mad people who live the same dream. That's something special. And then of course it's the Ironman World Championship and the best athletes are here. Everybody is, is in their best shape and everybody is confident coming to this race. They don't, everybody has done a good training and, and this is the race that really counts. It's not just a battle amongst the world's best Ironman athletes, but also a fight with the elements that makes the race in Kona so special. Well, the conditions we get here in Hawaii are really particular because it's humid, it's warm, and then you get those winds who are unpredictable. It's the constant you can have tailwinds on the way up to Harvey and then you can have tailwinds again on the way back because it just turns and then there's also the crosswinds, you never really know. There is a difference to the races in Europe where you have a lot of spectators and they can distract you when you feel low and you don't have that over here. That's why the heat in the energy lab feels even hotter than it is. And that's where the myth of fighting the elements really comes true. The mental strength is the key to success and you've got to be strong in the head, but inevitably you'll reach the point where it hurts and that's the point you have to overcome. The who's who of the Ironman elite are in Kona to battle it out for the most coveted title in the sport. And there are a number of European athletes in the running for the top spots, all with their own goals and game plans. It's an eight hour plus race, so you really have to balance everything. Uh, listen to your body, look around what's happening, make decisions. And I think that's the most important thing, make the right decisions on the right time during the race. The big difficulty, especially at the beginning of the race, is not to go too hard, to balance your power, to race smart, to manage the risk, but also to be ready to take a risk, because without a certain risk, you can't win the race here. The swim is key for me. There is an upwards trend and I hope it continues. The good thing is, if it doesn't go well, it's nothing new. And if it goes well, it'll give me confidence for the whole race. You have to be always uh, open and, and alert to what's happening in the race, how is people reacting. So it's, I have a little plan before I start, I start the race, but then uh, I, I, I have to take decisions in, in the moment, depending how, how the race goes. After an injury-plagued 2013 season, reigning world champion Leander Cave is cautious about her title chances, but she knows she's still got a fighting chance. I'm almost the underdog. Uh, in terms of my year and I feel that's definitely taken some of the performance pressure off me. Uh, so I feel like I'm coming in here and really enjoying it and really embracing it. And I think if I, if I historically go back to my best races, uh, that's always how I've won. 
This year, my goal is to win, because I've been a close second twice and it's been pretty tough, especially last year, losing by 65 seconds. It took me a while to get over it, and I don't want to have that feeling again. Winning the race would really be the present that I give to myself after this year's hard work. But having to train with Caroline over the, over the past six months has been inspirational. I kind of know exactly what the level has to be. And it's just a really good place to bear myself off, like to measure myself against the best and truly the best because she's been on the podium, you know, in the past three years, then that's just a great position to be in. It's 5.30 in the morning on race day. Transition is busy, and more than 2,000 age groupers and the world's best pro athletes get ready for the biggest race of their lives. At the traditional pre-race body marking, the big question is if the Australian reign in the men's race can be broken this year. The strong European contingent is led by 70.3 world champion Sebastian Kienle, last year's second and third placed Andreas Reilert and Frederik van Leerde, and this year's Asia-Pacific and European champion Eneko Janos. Defending women's champion Leander Cave arrives in Kona after a nightmare season and she faces stiff competition from last year's second place Caroline Steffen, fellow Brit Rachel Joyce and Australia's Marinda Carfrey. With the start looming closer, the tension is rising and the world's elite pros make their way to the deep water start. Who will win this year's ultimate Ironman title? The 3.8 kilometer swim course in Kailua Bay is an elongated rectangle that is more than 1,600 meters long and 100 meters wide. The race start is only seconds away. This is the moment every Ironman athlete has lived for all year. And finally, the start gun fires and the holy grail of Ironman racing has begun. More than 2,000 Ironman athletes take on one of the biggest challenges of their lives, and the frenzied activity in the 24-degree warm Kailua Bay water is a spectacular sight. As the tightly packed pro field powers ahead, defending champion Pete Jacobs takes the early lead. He is followed by a big group including Ivan Rania, Clayton Fettel, Brandon Marsh and Frederick van Leerde. Reaching the turn, Jacobs remains in front with a huge pack right behind him. In the women's race, Americans Amanda Stevens and Haley Chura set the pace at the beginning of the swim. And especially 28-year-old Chura, nicknamed the Frog, looks like a woman on a mission. At the turn, the race is still wide open and the lead group includes Chura, Stevens and Great Britain's Jody Swallow. In the men's race, American Brandon Marsh has now taken over the lead and the 37-year-old clocks the fastest average speeds. But with the pier in sight, the lead group is still bunched closely together. Approaching the swim exit, it's Marsh ahead of Australians Clayton Fettel and Pete Jacobs. Marsh is first out the water, closely followed by Fettel and last year's winner Jacobs. Belgium's Frederik van Leerde follows in fourth, and Estonia's Marco Albert in fifth place. As the leaders work their way through transition to start the 180-kilometer bike, one of the serious podium contenders, Germany's Sebastian Kieler, exits the water with a huge deficit of 3 minutes and 20 seconds. Kieler is joined in T1 by Andreas Reilert. The two Germans now have to play catch-up. The women's field also stays together in a tight bunch, and Haley Chura and Amanda Stevens do the hard work at the front. The conditions in Kailua Bay are perfect, and it's a fast race. Haley Chura still powers ahead, but swimming alongside the pier, a group of 12 women has established a lead over the rest of the field. First out of the water is American Haley Chura. She is seven seconds ahead of Jody Swallow in second, with defending champion Leander Kay following a few seconds later in third. Americans Meredith Kessler and Amanda Stevens now in fourth and fifth. A big group of about seven or eight women leave T1 together, and Caroline Steffen is right behind them. This is going to be an interesting race.
After the break, who can strike the decisive blow in the men's race? And how will the women's race pan out on the bike and the marathon? We are back at the Ironman World Championship in Hawaii, where Pete Jacobs leads a group of almost 20 athletes onto the bike course. The 180-kilometer bike leads from Palani Road onto the Queen K Highway and travels north to Harvey, where it turns back to T2 in town. Only minutes into the bike, American superbiker Andrew Starikovitz catches up with Jacobs and takes over the lead. Starikovitz, who holds the fastest bike split ever in an Ironman, really seems determined to change the dynamics of the race and paces ahead. Jacob struggles to keep up and is now more worried about the men behind him as the chasers close the gap to the defending champion. Before long, 2005 Kona winner Paracel Sultan has caught up with Jacobs and pushes the pace. Also in the same chase group, Belgium's Frederik van Leerde and Ineco Janos from Spain. Towards the back of the field, Sebastian Keeler is 3 minutes 44 seconds behind race leader Starikovitz. But the real surprise is Andreas Raylet, whose deficit is already more than 4 minutes. Starikovitz continues his lead as he makes his way north on the Queen K Highway to the turnaround in Harvey. But now he's followed by an even bigger chase group with Al Sultan, Jacobs, McKenzie and some of the best Ironmen in the world gunning for him. In the meantime, the Keenle Express is in full motion and clocks the fastest average speeds of more than 56 kilometers per hour, constantly closing the gap on the big chase group. In the early stages of the women's bike, a group of nine stays close to each other and last year's leading ladies Leander Cave and Caroline Steffen relentlessly push the pace with Jody Swallow and Meredith Kessler also right at the front. With the lead group so close together, at this point in time, it's anyone's race. Back with the men's race, Andrew Starikovitz extends his lead, clocking average speeds of more than 41 kilometers an hour. The young American is now in cruise control. Although the chase group is constantly growing, he is now two minutes, 25 seconds ahead of Pete Jacobs, who leads the chasers in second place. Can anyone make the move and try to close the gap? Or will Starikovic stay in control and take a lead all the way into T2 and onto the run? It remains to be seen, but at the 72 kilometer mark, Sebastian Keenler has taken the lead in the chase group and the Keenler Express is now two minutes 28 behind Starikovic. Pushing hard, Keenler, Van Leerde and Luke McKenzie are now his main opponents. However, one of Ironman's greats, Andreas Raylitz, looks like he's fighting a lost battle as he's already more than 19 minutes behind at the 72-kilometer mark. Arriving at the turning point in Harvey, the world's fastest Ironman on the bike, Andrew Starikovic is still in the lead. But with McKenzie, Keenler, and Van Leerde now in a three-man chase group, his lead has been reduced to under two minutes. Faris Al Sultan threw the turnaround in fifth position. Now, can the American keep up his frenetic pace? Or will McKenzie and Keenler close him down before T2? For now, it looks like McKenzie is the most serious challenger as he paces away from Keenler. The women's field, on the contrary, is still together in a big group, and American Meredith Kessler is now the pacemaker. At the 97-kilometer mark, she is in the lead. Ahead of Amanda Stevens, Leander Cave, Caroline Steffen, Rachel Joyce, and Jody Swallow, all separated by a mere seven seconds.
Switzerland's Caroline Steffen, second in Kona in the last two years, then tries to put her mark on the race. And together with Meredith Kessler and Great Britain's Rachel Joyce, she dictates the tempo at the front. Although holding on to his lead, Andrew Starikovic continues to lose ground to Luke McKenzie, who has never podiumed in Kona. Keenler's coming closer and closer, but can't keep up with McKenzie's pace, who is now the sole chaser. Then the inevitable happens. McKenzie overtakes Starikovic and is now the new leader in the men's race. Sebastian Keenler keeps pushing from third place, but can't quite get to McKenzie and Starikovic, who stay in touching distance of each other. Before long, McKenzie looks like he has gone too hard, and Starikovic once again takes over the lead, and now looks like he's in charge of the race for a second time. Further back, true drama unfolds, as Andreas Reilert is now cycling with one foot out of his shoe. It looks like the man, who finished on the podium for four consecutive years, is seriously struggling. I'm not really sure if I can run, but I will give it a try, then at least can finish the race. But shortly after, the race is over for Reilert. At the front of the women's race, the lead group keeps switching out the lead as Australia's Marinda Carfrey attempts to close the gap she's had after her weak swim. Also chasing the leaders with her is American Mary Beth Ellis. At the front, Meredith Kessler and last year's fourth-placed Rachel Joyce appear to be the fastest women. But Jody Swallow also keeps up with them. After having regained his lead, Andrew Starikovitz looks like he'll get into T2 ahead of Australia's Luke McKenzie. Sebastian Keenler from Germany, and Belgium's Frederick van Leerde, who still looks relaxed towards the end of the bike. After an exhilarating bike ride, Starikovic arrives in T2 as race leader. He is followed by Luke McKenzie in second place. As Starikovic leaves transition, he looks tired, and six-time Ironman champion Luke McKenzie is right on his heels. Sebastian Keenler reaches transition in third place, just under four minutes behind the leader. Belgian powerhouse Frederick van Leer is in fourth place, with a four-minute, 13-second deficit. With Dirk Bockel in fifth, there are three Europeans in the top five. Rachel Joyce is the first woman to get off the bike, followed closely by Meredith Kessler. The two dominated the bike towards the end of the 180 Ks and now take a narrow lead ahead of Jody Swallow, Michelle Vesterby and Liz Blatchford onto the run. The 42-kilometer marathon course is one of the world's toughest, with the energy lab near the airport being the critical point. The early stages of the run are dominated by Luke McKenzie, who runs at sub two-hour 40 marathon pace and has taken the lead ahead of Sebastian Kienler. The German 70.3 world champion looks strong and determined, but is still around three minutes behind the 32-year-old Australian, who also has to watch out for Frederick van Leerde. In the women's race, Meredith Kessler establishes a small lead early on in the marathon, with Rachel Joyce following in close second. Fellow Brit and Kona novice Jody Swallow at this point in third place, and Denmark's Michelle Vesterby in fourth, with both of them constantly swapping their positions. 2010 winner Marinda Carfrey starts her marathon more than seven and a half minutes behind the leaders and knows she's got a big task in hand. At the front of the men's race, Luke McKenzie runs a smooth and controlled race and is two minutes and 19 seconds ahead of Keenler. The German also looks strong, but it is last year's third place Frederick van Leerde who makes the biggest gains in the first half of the marathon. Van Leerde, who is a smart tactician, looks very calm and in great shape, and before long, he breathes down Sebastian Keenler's neck. And like last year, Keenler can't withhold the attack of the Belgian, and eventually, the 34-year-old from Menin overtakes the young German.
Shirley Keeler must feel a horrible sense of deja vu as Van Lierde moves away from him and takes over second place. In the meantime, Rachel Joyce and Meredith Kessler run side by side at the front of the women's race, and it looks like neither of the two women will give to each other an inch. But then Joyce makes the decisive move and paces away from Kessler, taking over the lead around the 11K mark. However, in the back of the field, a storm is brewing, and Marinda Caffrey is on fire, making up more than a minute over two miles. She is on her way to the front of this race, as a 32-year-old Australian first overtakes Leander Cave in sixth place, and then Jody Swallow in fifth place. Rini is clearly on a mission. Her pace is absolutely staggering. And only minutes later, she also passes Caroline Steffen to move into fourth place. Far from done, Michelle Vesterby from Denmark is next on her list. And now Carfrey is already in podium position, but she looks hungry for more. In the men's race, Luke McKenzie looks like he's gone too hard, and the Australian is clearly slowing down. As he's entering the infamous energy lab, Frederick van Leer is edging closer and is now in touching distance to McKenzie. Can the Australian fend off the Belgian? With the soaring temperatures and the loneliness in the energy lab playing their own part in the race, Van Leer is now clearly the stronger of the two, and he eventually catches up with McKenzie around the 26K mark. What a controlled performance by Van Leerde, who overtakes McKenzie with ease and puts himself into the driving seat for the World Championship title. In third place, Sebastian Keenler is also struggling as he encounters Van Leerde and McKenzie on their way out of the energy lab. This really is the toughest one-day endurance race in the world. Women's leader Rachel Joyce looks strong and has extended her lead over Kessler, who is now also overtaken by Marinda Caffre. The Australian continues her blazing pace and still clocks average speeds of under four minutes a K. And then the unbelievable happens, and Caffre also reaches race leader Rachel Joyce and passes her at lightning speed. She quickly establishes her lead and is flying towards the finish line. Frederick van Leerde smells the finish line as he powers down Ali Drive. What a clever performance by the exhilarated Belgian who knows now that no one can take away his victory. 17 years after his coach Luc van Leerde was the first European to win the Ironman World Championship, he becomes the second Belgian to claim the biggest title in Ironman. It's crazy. I, uh, it's a great feeling. I, I, I'm overwhelmed right now and uh, I think I don't understand what it means. I will only understand uh, from tonight on, tomorrow, once I get home, uh, oh man, it's a, a lifetime achievement for me, really. Having defended his lead for a long time in the marathon, an overjoyed Luke McKenzie from Australia reaches the finish line in second. And reigning 70.3 world champion Sebastian Keeler also shows his emotions as he's approaching the finish line. At times in the run, Kinder looked like a beaten man, but now he can celebrate his deserved third place. It's difficult to describe how I feel. Normally I'm not lost for words, but after such a race, I mean I've really given it my all. Here we have it. Frederick van Leerde wins ahead of Luke McKenzie and Sebastian Kienler. In the women's race, Rurinda Kafre is about to complete one of the most astonishing chases in Ironman history. Seven minutes, 40 seconds behind after the bike, she finishes with a new course record at the third fastest marathon time of all competitors, including the men. What a triumph. I am over the moon. I really had a dream day out there. Um, I couldn't have hoped for a better swim bike run combination. Yeah, I, I just had a special day. Great Britain's Rachel Joyce managed to hold on to her lead until 24 Ks. But today she couldn't stop Carfre and is clearly happy with her second place. You know, I'm really delighted with second. To go sub nine hours and it's my highest ever finish. And it, I'm kind of getting close to what I think 
I can do, you know, I still think I can improve, but yeah, I gave it everything, so um, I'm, I'm not complaining, I'm really happy. Also happy, another Brit, Liz Blatchford, who earns third place and completes a podium of worthy medalists. What a great day for women's Ironman. But for hundreds of athletes, the day is far from over. And for all of them, the finish line at the Ironman World Championship in Kona, Hawaii, is the culmination of months, if not years, of hard work and sacrifice. This really is the ultimate goal in Ironman, at the home of dreams coming true.